Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Mahaguru Yash Architecture Classes and we've started our preparation for our GATE 2020 architecture exam and for that we are solving our previous year question papers. We've completed till question uh, till GATE 2015 and from today today's video onwards we'll be start we'll be solving GATE 2014 exam architecture. So I'll be telling you that everything which I share with you in this video will be linked in the description down below and if you've got any doubt please do write up to my email or we can discuss in the comment box below so without further ado let's start as I told you in the earlier videos that I won't be discussing any general aptitude question only the architecture part will be discussed here so starting with question number one two things is a construction technique used in wood construction, steel construction, reinforced cement concrete construction or brick machinery. So I have got my notes ready for this. So what, ba what is basically two things? So two thing is two thing, the act or process of identing or furnishing with teeth, bricks alternatively projecting at the end of a wall in order to be bonded into a continuation or when the remainder is carried up. So basically when you have instead of uh, putting the same if this is a stretcher if you put the same stretcher here the bond would be very weak so to increase the bond strength you put your other stretcher above above the two joints of the below stretchers so this way at the end you have a stretcher left a half stretcher gap of stretcher coming in a half stretcher gap so this thing is known as two thing and it is very oftenly seen in brick construction. The next question is skeleton and skin concept in building design and construction evolved during the which of the periods Roman, Renaissance, Gothic or Greek? The answer is Gothic period. So I have a bit of uh, material for this. So this, uh, yeah, where is it here? So here a small description for shell and skeleton skill system has been given and in this part you can see that they have explained how buttresses, piers and uh, flying buttresses act as like a skeleton system. So what happens is from the top, like the dome, the dome transfers its load to the buttresses and the pyres and these pyres and buttresses transfers the load to the ground using flying buttresses and other things. So this acts as a skeleton and all the masonry around it acts as a skin. That is why in Gothic period you've seen a lot of uh, buttresses, pyres, arches and domes coming in. The next question is as per IRC standards, the minimum width of a two-lane urban carriageway without a raised curb is? The answer for this is basically 7 meter. So it is 7 meter for uh, without a raised curb and with a raised curb it is 7.5 meters. I have an IRC cross section. You can see this. So this part, it's a two-lane without a raised curb. That is why this is 7 meters. So the urban carriageway, as the question says, the urban two-lane carriageway without a raised curb is 7 meters. The next question is, Pritzker Award for the year 2013 has been awarded to. It's a very direct question and as per the current affairs of that time, this would be the most answered and the most the question which have been correctly answered by the students and the un and the answer is Toyo uh, Toyo Ito and Toyo Ito is famous for its aluminium house Yatsushiro Municipal Museum and Sendai Mediathek so it's a library the next question is hip roof is formed by surfaces sloping in one direction two direction, three directions or four directions. So the answer is basically four direction but uh, 
when the sloping is in two direction that roof is also known as the gable roof your typical gable roofs okay but if it's in four direction it is known as hip roof so i have a picture of different uh, sloping roofs here you can uh, refer this for other details as well the next question is hiroshima peace memorial museum in japan has been designed by so hiroshima peace memorial museum has been designed by kendo tange so it's something looks like this uh, you can get the original colored pdf in the description box from the description box and download it up so we have the hiroshima peace memorial by kendo tange the raj ghat by vanuji bhutta and the world trade center memorial by dalian lipskind the next question is in autocad the maximum number of points which has which can be snapped in a circle using o snap so basically o snaps give you points to pick up that object so we have to find it for a circle so this is a circle so when you use the o snap the points would be the center and it's four coordinates for four extreme points so it would be 1 2 3 4 5 so you'll have five o snap points the next question is development and author development authorities in india are established under which of the uh, provisions the municipal act the 74th constitutional amendment act the town and country planning act or the land acquisition act so it was uh, basically established under the town and country planning act and i've got a small uh, description so under the 74th constitution amendment act has been enacted to accord the constitutional recognition of the urban local bodies whereas land acquisition is the process through which government can acquire private lands municipal act doesn't apply to development authority so the answer could have been the town and the country planning act the next question is in escalators the angle of inclination with the horizontal plane should be in the range of so i have a diagram for this So you can see this is the typical elevation section, whatever you see of an elevator, and you can see the angle which is formed is varying from thirty to thirty-five degrees. So this is the answer. The next question is, as per the Census of India two thousand and eleven. The metropolitan urban agglomeration agglomeration is a continuous spread of several urban settlements where the minimum population is ten. The answer is ten lakhs. So let us understand some terms. So you have some terms known as outgrowth, urban agglomeration, and uh, as per the census of nineteen seventy one seventy one, any area can be referred to as a standard urban area if it has a core population of minimum fifty thousand, a rural administration, seventy five percent of the male working population has to be non agricultural, and it has to it should have a a density of four hundred persons per kilometer, and for more information please refer to this notes provided down below. The next question is BEES, which is B double E S. Stand is an acronym for which of the following questions and uh, options? The answer is building and environmental and economic sustainability. So basically, it is a software developed by uh, developed on the ASTM standards and uh, basically used by US scientists to study environment and its economical sustainability. For more information about this, please refer to my notes. The next question is: In a single stack system of plumbing, you have four options. Let us see because it's a tricky question. All the appliances and traps are fully ventilated. Only WC branches are connected with anti-siphonage pipes. Anti-siphonage pipes are omitted, and only the stack is ventilated above the branch connection at each floor level. So let us first see how a single stack look like. 
so you have a single central pipe to which with an air vent at the end to which all the pipelines either uh, it can be wastewater or the grey water everything is connected to a single pipe so now let us uh, read the four options and correlate it, with it correlate it with it the first is all appliances and traps are fully ventilated since every trap is connected to a central stack which is ventilated hence all the pipes are ventilated only wc branches are connected with anti siphonage pipes so it is of course uh, true because you need an a siphon action in wc to pull out uh, the pull out to pull all the the waste in this uh, in this uh, central stack hence wc branches will have anti siphonage pipes and there is no siphon action required for wash basins in large quantities uh, so it can be easily handled with p or q uh, pq or you, your normal traps so you do not need anti siphonage traps in wc uh, so you need anti siphonage traps in wcs anti siphonage pipes are omitted which is like really wrong so in a single stack hence the answer is anti siphonage pipes are omitted the next question is the maximum bending load moment in a simply supported beam of 8 meter span subjected to a uniformly distributed load of 20 kN meter over the entire span is it's a very simple question so you have a simply supported beam with a uniform distributed load of 20 kN per meter it's an 8 meter pipe so a uniformly distributed load can be changed with the central load of 20 into 8 so 20 into 8 makes it 160 kN so since it is centrally loaded these two reaction forces would be so a plus b would be 160 and since it is centrally loaded a ab would be equal so hence it would be 80 kN and 80 kN now you have to find the maximum bending uh, bending moment obviously since you have your since it is centrally loaded you will have your uh, bending moment maximum at the center so you will directly find the bending moment at this point so bending moment at this point would be force into the lever arm so force is 80 and Would be eighty into eight by two, which gives you one sixty kilonewton. Also, you can use a very direct formula, which is W L square by eight. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. The next question says, the criteria for background noise in hospitals and apartments is. So let us first understand what uh, noise uh, NC is. So noise criteria is basically the ratio between the noise created uh, in the room to the air conditioning noises. so as per the standards you have some noise criteria so this is the list of noise criteria and according to lee uh, the answer for hospital and apartment will be 20 to 30 next question is as per the nbc the minimum width of a staircase flight in an educational building above 24 meter height should be so i have a table from the nbc so educational buildings above 424 meters is 2 meter so the answer becomes 2 meter among the following the one that is not a land assembly technique so what happens in a land assembly is you assemble different parcels of land to either have a big parcel land to create something or for other uses 
so the answer is basically land use zoning is not an option so what happens in the other so the first is accommodation reservation so accommodation reservation means already you have reserved some parts of land and while creating something new all this reserved land would be assembled together the next is town planning scheme which is in every every master plan you you can change the use of the building uh, use of the land and such that the a part of parts of small small land can be aggregated aggregated to form a bigger land and can be used to for other uh, uses the next is to transfer of development rights so what basically done is if you're li living in some uh, some land and it is being converted into some other use so you will be shifted to other uh, place by transferring some of your rights as in if you in the present land you have a fr of 1.2 or 1.25 the other land which the government will provide you will uh, provide you you'll get you'll get some uh, benefits like your fr would be increased or your tax would be reduced some kind of uh, gift you can say can is given the next question is the grand gallery in egyptian architecture is provided in obviously great pyramid and i have in the notes i have provided you with a typical section of a pyramid and you can refer this for earlier for more uh, knowledge the next question is in taipei 101 building the steel sphere as tmd which is the tuned mass damper is suspended to reduce the horizontal sway due to what so basically mass damp viewers are a tuned mass damper also known as the harmonic absorber or the seismic damper is a no, is a device mounted in structures to reduce the amplitude of mechanical vibration the application can prevent discomfort damage or outright or, or failure so what happens is if you have a building and there is a some kind of horizontal force this horizontal core force can be because of only two reasons either it's a seismic force or wind loads so when the building moves this way to keep the building steady or uh, the the tmd moves in the opposite direction so as the building does not fall and if it's when the other direction it will move in the other direction so it tries to keep the building upright straight the next question is finger plan concept of our urban planning was initially adopted in so finger plan is very famously seen in copenhagen and we've learned it in urban design as well in the last uh, question for today's uh, video is question 20 which says the most important property of concrete in its fresh state is what so when it's in, when the concrete in it is in its fresh state you cannot com obviously compare it compression because it's fresh straight it's always the uh, already in a very not a creamy but in um, wet format obviously in this uh, at this uh, stage you cannot either test it compressive or tensile straight or either elastic modulus only the workability since you are checking how to lay the concrete that is why workability can be checked here so you have a this i have a definition for workability here which says the property of concrete which determines the amount of useful internal work necessary to produce full compaction that is workability is the amount of energy to overcome friction while compacting also defined as the relative ease with which concrete can be mixed transported molded or compacted uh, so guys this is it for today's video if you've got any doubt in the above questions please write up down in the comment box below or either you can either also mail me and i'll be linking down all the material shared here in the description box below and please do like comment and share to my uh, share my share my channel and i'll be back with the next part soon thank you for watching